Welcome back. Uh, we have seen a spate of uh, rating upgrades lately. Yesterday we got rating upgrades for Yes Bank and Magmuffin Corp. Several other public sector banks also have been upgraded. So is there uh, an improvement in India Inc.'s debt quality? We are going to people who would know this uh, very well. Joining us now uh, are uh, Somashekar Vemudi, Senior Director of Crystal Ratings and Jitin Makar, Vice President Credit Policy at ICRA. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, let me come to you, Mr. Vemuri. What's uh, the situation with the uh, companies you rate uh, in the last uh, two months, say, since uh, October 1st? Have the number of upgrades been uh, much better than the previous uh, quarter or have they been much better than downgrades? Uh, so, uh, on a monthly basis, it is uh, it is a little too short a time frame to kind of uh, look at this picture. But if we look at the six months, uh, first six months, uh, uh, you know, we saw uh, downgrades, outnumber upgrades, and our credit ratio uh, was around 0.54 times. Uh, and our expectation was that even in the second half, uh, we would uh, we would see uh, pressure uh, continuing. Uh, albeit we are seeing uh, green shoots in terms of. Uh, uh, high frequency indicators uh, and are bouncing back, but still uh, the underpinning of uh, credit pressures continue. And uh, even for the first two months uh, in, the, in the second half, uh, it's in line with our expectation uh, in terms of uh, downgrades uh, outnumbering upgrades. No, one minute. When you say 0.5, you mean for 100 downgrades, you had 54 upgrades? And is this April to uh, September 30th? That's correct. That's correct. So, ah. uh, for every 100 downgrades, we would have had 54 upgrades uh, okay. in the first uh, six months of the... First six months, one can understand what terrible. But uh, would you say the ratio would have been 100 is to 54 even October-November? No. The ratio will be different. But as I said, you know, uh, a month is too short a time frame to... No, I agree. Uh, really but even if you can give us some picture. feel... But, yeah. So, it is, it is uh, in line with what we have seen. Second quarter, uh, where uh, you know we, we we saw marginally uh, the ratio being better, though it was still much less than one. Uh, but but uh, clearly the first quarter was very very better. The second quarter was uh, relatively better, and third quarter was also in line so far. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is relatively better? I mean, uh, was it like uh, 60 to 100? Uh, was it 70 to 100? Upgrade. It was thereabouts. It's about it's about you know 0.65 uh, or or thereabouts. I don't have the specific okay. number, but it was better than the overall 0.54 that was so mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's open it up and uh, bring uh, uh, Jitin into the conversation as well. Jitin, same. I know we're being a little unfair because I know you'd be better placed to answer this maybe two, three months down the line, but that's the nature of the market, right? It needs to price in everything as quickly as possible. If you can give us some improvement. Uh, that one is seeing in October, November, and if you can't give a number, then at least uh, a color. What is the common thread that's leading to the upgrades? Is it repayment of debt? What is improving in the credit profiles? In fact, uh, the views that Shom has expressed, we also have uh, similar uh, statistics, statistics based on which we will provide this color. The point is that uh, even as one might say that upgrade momentum might be looking up, uh, but that does not really mean that uh, credit quality pressures have abated. Uh, for example, uh, in the current fiscal, we've seen that only 5% of our portfolio has seen an upgrade. And contrast this to our historical averages, this was uh, near about 10 But having said that, uh, even FY20, the year which has gone by, even there we had seen upgrade momentum falling off and downgrades going up. And that has sustained for obviously the pandemic reasons and uh, business disruption, lockdown and all of that. Your question that what, how is it looking now, starting from today, let's say 12 months from today, uh, things have improved sequentially. So the, the reference point matters. Yes, compared to Q1, we are in a better shape, but does not mean that compared with FY20 or Q4 uh, we are looking uh, at a situation where credit quality pressures have abated. That's not the case. Jitin, we point. only want the delta. Uh, no, Jitin, we only want the delta. You can tell us, like uh, Somshekar said, what were your upgrade downgrade ratio for the first six months and what may they likely be in October, November? I think the question, uh, Som also tried to mention this twice, that one month is uh, quite a short period to establish trends. It may not work like that. Uh, ratings are a form of success and just because a few entities would have, or a large number of entities would have been downgraded in H1, FI21, 
uh, does not mean that uh, incrementally we would see a trend reversal. Uh, we take a very uh, medium term view. It's very different. The approach is very different compared with uh, the stock market equity price approach. Uh, we are not really looking at achieving a particular level of accuracy in the ratings. It's also about achieving the target of uh, stability in the ratings. And hence, uh, the question uh, mentioned, and I would also mention the same way, that uh, uh, we do not look at monthly trends in the way uh, the other indicators might. One, one would want, want to look at other indicators. Okay, so Jitin, particularly for banks and NBFCs, can you give us a six-month progress update, up, uh, you know, update on whether the credit quality measures have abated? I mean, any kind of quantitative data that you can share with us, particularly for banks and NBFCs. Sure. In the past uh, seven months, we have graded uh, five banks and a uh, few financial institutions. Uh, banks specifically have seen an upgrade because their capital positions have improved. Uh, and uh, we've seen uh, uh, some asset quality uh, pressures uh, stabilize uh, and based on which upgrades have happened. Capital infusion, Sabiner, as I was mentioning, few banks were able to mop up a large amount of capital a couple of months ago, uh, which led to an upgrade. Uh, some public sector banks have been upgraded. Uh, and uh, uh, so banking system space, we've seen uh, the, the pressures that were there until FY20, uh, which had... Uh, caused a lot of downgrades in the banking space. There has been uh, a trend reversal of sorts, I would say, uh, particularly in banks. In case of NBFCs, uh, and within that, wholesale NBFCs were the uh, Achilles heel for the sector. And it was expected that if this sector continued to face pressures, then it could have uh, ripple effects across the financial sector as well as the real economy. Mm. Because of central bank regulations, of course, there as well, we've seen that uh, credit quality pressures have abated. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the recovery might be fragile because uh, the wholesale book, the real estate book, the recovery there will be very, very important for uh, sustained recovery, sustained improvement in the credit profile of NBFC. Mm -hmm. No, Jitin, we perfectly understand the difference between debt and equity. Uh, but there have been some signs in the uh, earnings reports as well. EBITDA has, uh, uh, for the listed companies in the second quarter grew substantially. And almost all that we speak with, and even for that matter some NBFCs say, that the extent to which corporate India is paying back money uh, is, uh, uh, you know, uh, affecting the fact that it doesn't show because the uh, uh, repayment is so high. And therefore, Somshikar, I'm asking you, you know, is there a, a qualitative feeling that balance sheets have improved in India? And specifically, uh, Sonia already asked about financial sector. Even in metals, do you see an improvement uh, in uh, balance sheet quality? So very clearly, uh, if you look at the last, uh, you know, three, four uh, years, in uh, balance sheet quality. So very clearly, uh, if you look at the last, uh, you know, three, four uh, years, uh, uh, you know, going into the pandemic and even uh, uh, during the pandemic, uh, given given the utilization levels uh, across across variety of sectors were uh, really on the lower side. So the corporate India was clearly waiting. They were not opening the first things for me investments or apex and uh, we were uh, using the accruals to you know pay down the debt and that, that has clearly reflected in much stronger balance sheets uh, uh, you know, uh, across across sectors second aspect is you you also seen that uh, through the through the process of asset quality recognition and then thereafter uh, the resolutions through and outside of the IBC, I think there have been uh, a fairly sizable amount of uh, uh, exposures uh, that have been resolved and are in the process of getting resolved. So, so very clearly, when we entered the, the, this pandemic, the corporate India, uh, the balance sheet was looking fairly robust. And we looked at, uh, 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 you know, uh, from our rating approach, we looked at the resilience of the uh, uh, various uh, uh, sectors in terms of how they would be able to shape up during the pandemic. Uh, one of the uh, clear strengths was the uh, the other others clearly being you know uh, the ability to bounce back quickly uh, uh, given the nature of the demand. Because, so because, so because that we don't have so, so much time on the show. If you can tell us which sectors yeah. are you seeing more upgrades. So very clearly, uh, in terms of our resilience framework, we highlighted some of the sectors, the high resilience sectors, uh, we would, would fare better. And even in the first six months, and as we go into the next two months, 
uh, we have seen uh, that play out in line with our uh, resilience framework. Sectors such as pharma, sectors uh, such as agri uh, products, and some of the uh, sectors in the power sector, utilities, they are the ones which have seen more buoyancy. Uh, on the other hand, sectors which are in the least resilient uh, uh, category, uh, textiles, uh, real estate, are the ones which have uh, seen more pressures in terms of more downgrades compared to upgrades in those sectors. Okay, so very quickly, just 30 seconds left left on the show. The same thing, I mean, the companies that you have updated either rating or the outlook, uh, which are the sectors that are most prominent? Since I mentioned that only 5% of our portfolio has been upgraded, it's not that these upgrades have happened because of any sectoral tailwinds. These are very idiosyncratic and firm-specific factors. So establishing a pattern that some sectors are certain seeing uh, a sectoral tailwind uh, growth and demand, that has not really contributed to upgrades. All right, got that. Uh, uh, it is idiosyncratic. Uh, thank you very much, Jitin and uh, Somshikar, for joining us in this discussion. Uh, we have to wind down on Bazaar. Chartbusters coming up.